got your mind made up, have you? You got your stiff back, stubborn Jared Barkley mind made up? <laughs> I like you too, Brother Nick. No, I mean it. You have to set time apart for fun. The hills are running with deer this year. I'm afraid I can't. I have to prepare a brief. Judge Norris will be back in town on Thursday. Besides, with both you and Heath out, somebody in this family has to do an honest day's work. Uh-huh. Well, I'll tell you what. When I line up that six-point buck in those sights, I'm going to think of you sweating it out back in town. <laughs> Morning. Howdy. Looking for someone? Is this the Barkley place? It is. You have some business with the family? Well, one of them, uh, an old friend of mine, calls himself Heath. Well, he's my brother. I'm Jared Barkley. Gil Anders. Uh, I'm afraid you won't find him at the house. He's gone? He'll be back tonight. I'd be happy to give him a message. Oh, no, sir. I, I got to talk to him myself. I've been looking for him for nearly three years. Well, in that case, maybe you better wait at the house. I'm sure my sister and mother would make you comfortable. I don't want to be no trouble. No trouble at all. I'd take you up myself, but I'm due in town. Much obliged. Waste of time and trouble trying to save him. Seeing as good as dead anyway. He friend of yours? My brother's. He won't be for long. You're from Coryville? That's right. We've been deputized to bring him in. Don't you mean to gun him down without warning? Bring him in any way we could. Mister, you don't know the run he'd give us. Sly as a weasel, smart as a fox. This is the first time we even catch sight of him. So, being it ain't no concern of yours, we'll just load him up and take him back. Not to Coryville, gentlemen. Not in his condition. Seems to me you're forgetting we carry a badge. A badge, not a license to kill. Mister, you just best stand aside. I mean, he ain't worth it for you to do something foolish. I'm just pointing it out. Two to one. You better count again. This old mare's leg will burn a pretty big hole in you at close range. I advise you to climb back up on that horse and get out of here, the both of you. Now, come on, get. You're on private property, gentlemen. You're trespassing. Huh? But to be more specific, you're breaking the law. <laughs> back. This time we'll come with the law. Who's he? Some friend of Heath's. They never gave him a chance. Better get him out of the house before he bleeds to death. He might anyway. Easy, Nick.
Let's just get a hold of Doc Morar and see if he's able to find Heath, huh? What happened? It's a friend of Heath's, bushwhacked by some alleged deputies. Alleged deputies? Or bounty hunters with badges from Coryville. They've got a wanted on him. Well, that's hardly proof of guilt from Coryville. What's the charge? Murder. A friend of Heath? Senor Heath! I've heard of it, but I never believed it. Two left feet and a foghorn voice. What I did, senor? Oh, you just lost me a deer, that's all. A fine, beautiful six-point buck. Biggest I ever had in my sights. Oh, it's all right. He'll be back. So will I. Well? They sent me to look for you. They want you to come home. He's a friend of yours there. Friend of mine? Who? I don't know. They don't say his name. But you ask me, senor, I tell you to hurry. I think your friend, he's hurt pretty bad. Wouldn't be honest if I said it looked good. When will Heath be back? That's hard to say. Why? You say he's Heath's friend. He'll need some blood. You want a chance of transfusion? And I hope it won't clot, but if we don't take the gamble, he'll die anyway. Well, Siego's up looking for Heath right now, but you think it's safer not to wait? Let's have at it. Will you boil me some water, please? Start. Keith, we couldn't wait any longer. He said he was an old friend of yours. Doc's trying to pull him through. Let him die. Don't say anything. Just stick to things you know about. I know about Coryville. What's Coryville got to do with it? He's wanted there. Well, then send him back. To what kind of a trial, Heath? You want justice in Coryville, you ask Ben Colder. You ask him, do you live, do you die, do you work, starve, or kiss your own wife? Judge Benjamin Colder, the hanging judge. They say he orders men strung up like you and I would order eggs for breakfast. I'll get it. Fred? Jared? You're welcome here, Fred. They're not. Now, don't be hasty, Jared. I looked over their papers. They're deputized. They've got the right. To shoot a man from ambush? They swear we was running. It's their word against yours, Jared. 
Look, Jared, I don't like this any more than you do, but I carry a badge and the law is the law. Well, you're right, of course. Uh, may I ask who told you that Anders is in the house? Them. Oh, they did, did they? Well, uh, did you gentlemen see him in the house? Do you have any proof? Easy to prove. Just go look. Now, that would make things simple, wouldn't it? Provided, of course, you have a warrant. Warrant? Entry and search does require a warrant, if I understand the law. I'll take my chances on that. Mr. Barkley is a lawyer. Takes a warrant, we'll get a warrant. Where do we go? To town. See the judge. We'll be back later. I wouldn't think so, mister. Judge won't be back till Thursday. Late. I don't need no judge. I know Anders is in there. I'll guarantee it. You see him in there? Well, no. Did you see him carried in? No, but... But he's warned for murder, and I'll swear well, to you... Well, you can swear to the judge on Thursday. That's day after tomorrow. Two days ain't long. We'll be back. Afternoon, Jared. Afternoon, Fred. Is that Fred outside? It was. He's wanted for murder. You should have let him take him. The condition he's in, he'd be dead before they'd gone a mile. You all right, Nick? Oh, yeah, fine. All right, then, when he's well enough. That'll depend on what I find in Coryville. You're going to Coryville? Heath, I don't have any choice. I'd be an accomplice to murder if I let those deputies take him without my knowing the truth. Well, why don't you ask me? I'll tell you the truth. I'm asking. There were three of us working around the motherload country. Anders, myself, and Willie Martin, a kid just past 16. There'd been talk of a silver strike over in Nevada. We decided we'd take the short way. The desert? Yeah. But we were mostly across when the Indians hit. Yumas, screaming, shooting, and running our horses off into the dark. We held on to one and one skin of water. I figured that would be enough, each taking his turn to ride and drink. But Anders, he had different ideas. He waited until we were asleep. They took off, took the horse and the water, and left us there. I kept telling this kid he'd gone for help, and he believed me, right up until the end, just before he died. I was holding him in my arms, trying to give him some shade. And he made me swear, swear if I ever found Anders, I'd kill him. No matter what's happened in Coryville, he's earned it to die. When a court of law says so, Heath, not before. And no one for me. Mother? Audra? Nick? I'd like to be. Heath, listen to me. I just did. And what you didn't say was loud and clear. You're bringing it down to him or me. No, to right or wrong, and that leaves us no choice. You want me, I'll be in town at the hotel. Just tell me when he's left the house. I'm in a pack. I want to take the night stage. He's not ready to ride, senor. The scent is loose again. I thought I told you. This horse is a son of a gun, always fools me, always sucks wind. How smart does it take to outsmart a horse? He's got a mind of his own, just like you, huh? <laughs> if his own mind could tumble me off someday just because you're too lazy to kick him in the belly and tighten a cinch. If you let that happen again, you'll be out mending fences and chopping mesquite. That may be all you're good for anyway. I guess he just worries for his friend.
shouldn't I be? For Heath? Even more for you. I wish I could talk you out of going to Coralville. Don't try, Mother, please. But if you have to be back by Thursday, that only gives you two days. The world was made in seven. And not that I'm trying to compete. Now, look, I'll telegraph you by noon tomorrow. Promise me you won't worry. I just arrived in town. I thought maybe you might be able to help me. Peddling? <laughs> just advice. I'm a lawyer. Lawyer, huh? Well, don't give me no pleasure to tell you this, but you're fixing to make a living. Might as well know you're going to have to scratch for business. Uh, well, I'm not interested in business, Marshal. Just information about a man named Gil Anders. What kind of information? Oh, who he was, what he was, anything you might happen to know about him. There isn't too much to tell. He worked on jobs around town. What time he wasn't working on the red eye. Harmless enough when he was off the stuff, though. About busted me up to bring him in. I take it you arrested him. That's right. For murder. Well, I thought you knowed. He's pure quiet when I locked him up. Should have known he was figuring to make a break. He tried to escape. I just told you. Right that same night. Tell me, Marshal, were there any witnesses to this murder? Not as I ever heard. And you put out a wanted on him, dead or alive, without so much as a witness to back up the charge? Everybody knew it was him. Without a trial. There'd have been a trial. I'd have seen to it. Yes. Yes, I'm sure you would have, Marshal. Now you want some more? You better go someplace else. Now just one more thing, Marshal. Who was he supposed to have murdered? The school teacher, Horace Ames. Why? The teacher, he sort of took care of Anders. Handouts and such. The story is he got tired of it and told Anders off. So? Anders, he waited one night for him by the schoolhouse and, uh, well, that's how it'd come to me. Thank you very much, Marshal. Mister, you say your name is Barkley? I did. You wouldn't be one of them Barkleys from up around Stockton. I would. just arrived, all the way from Stockton. If you asked me, I'd say the trip was fine. If you asked. I'd like a room, please. We're all filled up, mister. Oh? Well, if you're not, you're in trouble. I refer you to the state code. 
Specifically, chapter 7, paragraph 12, subsection C, which states, and I quote, any proprietor, clerk, or employee of a hotel or inn which refuses lodgings when such lodgings are available is guilty of a misdemeanor, punishable by a fine or imprisonment or both. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like a room, please. All right. Sixteen. Straight up the stairs, first door on your right. Oh, checkout time is two o'clock. I'll have to charge you a half a day for this morning. You do that. Ben? Ollie? Ben. Ollie, what's your problem? It ain't just mine. It's yours, too. What are you talking about? A lawyer just come into town. He's been asking me questions about Gil Anders. Asking questions won't get him nothing? Ben, I took Matt's word Anders did it. Now, I don't want to be put in the middle of anything. Someday, I'm going to get me a marshal that don't come running to me to wipe his nose. Ollie, just do as you're told. You ain't going to be in no middle. Well, I just couldn't help thanking. You talk problems. This telegram's one for real. It's from Hoover and Waiting. They're up in stock. They got Anders holed up, but they can't get to him. Some family up there is hiding them out. Well, they're both deputized. They can just walk in and take him. Uh, that family carries too much weight. Did you ever hear of the Barclays? Ben, I just talked to one. That lawyer feller I've been telling you about. He's a Barclay? Ben, what do we do? He's a guest. He gets to make the first move. Matt, you heard what Mr. Odom said. Why would a lawyer come all the way from Stockton to ask questions about Gil Anders? He'll find out he's wasting his time, so why don't you just stop worrying? But even so... thought of that. Don't say that to me. I told you everything that happened. Get your shawl. But I tell you, Ben, I just had to give him the room. He had me twixt the tail and the snoot. Why, tossing the law at me like that? Why, I never you... knew you had much reverence for the law. It's just as well to keep an eye on him. Makes any mistakes, you come to me directly. I'll do that, Ben. You can count on that, Ben. Yes, you were leaving? Sure, Ben. You bet. You bet. She's scared, Uncle Ben. Must be that lawyer. Honey, you're causing this family a lot of trouble. Told her there won't be no trouble. Everybody in this town knows who butters their bread. Well, now, you know that, nephew, and I know that. Question is, does Mr. Barclay know it? Maybe somebody ought to teach it to him. Pulses may be a shade stronger. The transfusion helped. Did Heath come back? He's like his father, just as strong and twice as stubborn. How about Jared? He said he'd telegraph, and I'm sure he will. Let us know if you need anything. Victoria, hmm? if Heath were here, it could make the difference.
car. Dead man's hand. Aces and eights. Three big men. Mister, you sure like giving that green stuff away. Well, it's only money, gentlemen. Yeah, but you don't have to give it away like it was peanut shells. Them some pretty wild bets you've been making. I'll tell you what. I'll make another one. One hundred U.S. dollars. Cash. But no one at this table can tell me why Gil Anders killed a schoolteacher. Well, I guess it wasn't as wild as I thought. No one seemed to take me up on it. I'm afraid you've left me out. Well, gentlemen, thanks for the hospitality. Whiskey. I've tasted worse. Well, it's the best we got. Figured you could afford it. You on the level about that hundred bucks? I am. You go to pay me. Dropped a hundred on the table. Uh, drinks are two bits. You can have the whole bottle for a dollar. I'll take the bottle. Thanks. tell you something. And this is from a man who knows. Don't ever trust anybody. And I mean anybody. A nice girl like you could get hurt pretty bad. And the very ones you count on will be the ones that'll go against you. And then sit down to supper and never think on it twice. Give me a whiskey, please. I said, give me a whiskey. You heard the lady. Give her a whiskey. That's right, lady. No, thanks, just the same. I'm just trying to be a little friendly. The lady wants you to leave. The lady didn't say so. Well, Ed, I'm saying so. I just hope you've got a good reason. Why? Are you the only member of the family privileged to make a fool of himself? I've taken my whiskey like this before to keep the life in me when it was 10 below and we were bringing the herd down from the summer range and the snow so deep we had to wait for a freeze. I was ready to give up many times, but I didn't because your father was with me. I don't know if I could have made it had I been alone. Heath, he's alone. He may die, he may not live out the day. Just let me know and I'll dig the hole. Dr. Marat feels that if he came to and recognized you, he might... Look, I told you how it was. I want to see him dead. A rope, bullet, anything, just so he's dead. And if I can, by not being home, then I'll take that as special satisfaction. Well, I knew you could hate. But I didn't know how much. Please. 
Oh, by the way, can you tell me where I can find Amy Coulter? Mister, why don't you stay out of it and stop asking before you get hurt, huh? Sure. Matt Coulter. Judge is my uncle. Thought you'd want to think on that when you ride out. Maybe I will. When I ride out. You got a horse in the alley all saddled and waiting. Just happens he's pointed towards Stockton. Well, now, that's very generous of you. I'll be happy to borrow him. Now. When I finish my business here in your fair city. <clears throat> that ought to do for now. Personally. Yes, I did. I, I'm having him double check every telegraph that does come in. As soon as it does, he'll send a writer out with it. Oh, now look, telegraphs have been known to be delayed. Jared promised. He said not later than noon. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. That's for me to ride into Coryville myself. Be careful, Nick. <laughs> That's my middle name. Oh, uh, do you think maybe he's like right along? Oh, I'm sure he'd love to go. Well, it wouldn't hurt to ask. All right. Don't scare Uncle Ben. He's real stubborn-like. Wouldn't listen to reason. Figured a way to handle him? I was waiting on you for that. Now, wait. If something happens, I'm the one who'll be blamed. Now, Ben, I'm the law in this town. When I say you're the law, Could have an accident. You ain't worried none he's a Barkley? Stockton, maybe. Here he's not. Ben, don't do it. I'm asking you. If you got no stomach for it, then get out. Now, look, Ben, this I whole... said get out. What kind of an accident do you have in mind? Freight wagon? Four up like that? Somebody gets run over. He ain't gonna ask many more questions. Oh, no, Uncle Ben, you can't. I feel guilty enough about the other. Please let him go. I'll never find out. Amy! You better go home. That's right. You'll be killed if you stay here. Please come with me. Who are you? I'm Amy Coulter. My 
of here. didn't you? Yes. I want you to tell me what happened. I can't. I've got to get back. If Matt comes home, I'll be back before school starts. I will. Please let me go now. All right. I'll see you in the morning. Ten more, just to keep out the horse thieves. You boys can't beat kings. You better drop. I ought to bust you right in the teeth. Oh, now, you just go ahead and try. I'd like an excuse to tear you apart top to bottom. All right, big brother. You name the game. But anything you start, I figure to finish. Well, come on. Now, that would pleasure me. But I'd like the proper time to do the proper job. And unfortunately, right now, I don't have the proper time. But I'll tell you what. You just try me when I get back from Coryville. Coryville? Jared went down there last night. He was supposed to telegraph us. We haven't heard a word. Oh, but don't let that interfere with your card game. Gentlemen. some breakfast. Thanks. Matt went out early with the others. They're still looking for you. The stage leaves at 7.30. I packed some sandwiches. You'll be hungry on the stage. If I'm on the stage. You must leave. They'll kill you if you don't. I'm not leaving until you tell me what happened. About the school teacher, Horace and me? That's right. There was nothing, nothing that in any way could be considered wrong. I understand. You believe me? Yes, I think I do. No one in Coryville did. I came out here from Ohio. Came out to teach. I hated it. Oh, not the children. I love the children. But this town, shoddy and vulgar. Most of all, lonely. No one to talk to. That's the worst kind of loneliness, don't you think? I suppose. And I married Matt. Found I couldn't talk to him either. And then Horace came to take over the school. And he was young and bursting with knowledge about books and, and people, science and nature. At last I had someone I could talk to. It was always in the daytime, with the children around. I said I understood. Except once, at night. Horace was working late. And I wanted to return a book. Most of all, I wanted to talk about it. So I came here, and we talked. And afterwards, Horace walked outside with me. Matt was there. 
He said vile, horrible things to him. Horace stood up to him. Matt killed him. Blamed it on Gil Anders. And you'd have let Anders die for that? I don't know. Matt said he'd kill me, too. If I wrote that out, would you sign it? Is there time? You have to catch that stage. We've got 15 minutes. That's plenty of time. Is Mr. Barkley uh, registered here? Barkley? Yeah. I don't believe we have a Mr. Barkley here. Oh, you had him last night? What room is he in? I said, what room? 16. The key. Thank you. Thanks for helping us find him. Pat, he's leaving on the stage. You'll never see him again. Yeah. Pleased to see you. Matt Coulter. He's the one that should have been on that wanted poster. Let me through. Let me through. Them. They killed him. They gunned him down. The whole three of them. I want them under arrest. Arrest? What are you talking about? You heard me, Ollie. I'm making the charge myself. Take him in. Look, Ben. Something gone wrong with your hearing. I'm charging the men with murder. It wasn't murder. 
I saw it. Matt fired first. They were only defending themselves. I'm telling you once more, Ollie. I want them in jail. I'm sorry, Ben. If the witness said it was self-defense. Are you trying to stand up to me? Ben, I'm kind of partial to this badge. I aim to wear it a spell. Like it ought to be worn. All right. A couple of you men take Matt to Doc Grant's. All right, folks, no more reason for you to be standing here. Let's move along. Come on. Take Matt's horse. I'll come up for him. I don't plan on staying in this town very long. stubborn to die. That's what your blood did to him. <laughs> he only wants one thing, to talk to you. We've got nothing to talk about. Well, now, you can't be sure until you let him speak his piece. You mean to let him try and crawl out of what he did? How do you know he didn't have a good reason? Because I know Anders. He's guilty. Heath, you thought he was guilty at Corryville, too. Heath, please. time to find you. But I kept looking. Close to three years. All right, Andrew, say what you want. Let's get it over with. That was a stinking bad thing I'd done out there in the desert. No excuses for it, neither. Not then, not now. I was just too purely scared, was all. Thing like that, it stays with you. He touched your heart. It's the whole thing. You, you do something wrong, you do it mostly to yourself. What do you want from me? I know you can't forgive me. I, I got no right to ask. But I swear, I'd give my life to do it over. And that's what I come to ask. That you'd believe I would. I believe you would. 